So good morning. Today is June the 2nd, 2022, and uh, I'm super excited to be here today. You don't know how, how <clears throat> excited I am to, to get to have a couple of guests on here. If, if Sean can figure out how to unmute his microphone, uh, but we are super, I'm super excited to, to have everybody on the line here. Maybe I'll call Sean, but let's see if we can get him on the line here in a second. But um, I want to introduce to you today, and uh, for those of you who are brand new on the line, you probably know that this is my training website. Just a little bit about this is that this is where I house everything. Uh, every week we do a, re a, a, a training, and uh, so I, I record those trainings, and hopefully you can see this right here. But let me make sure I'm sharing my screen here. Share the entire screen. So let me make sure I'm sharing my screen here. So everybody in your chat button, can you see my screen? Say yes in your chat button if you can see my screen. If you can see me toggling back and forth here. You want to make sure we can see this right here. So type yes in your chat button if you can see my screen. Yes. All right, Andy. Thank you. Uh, so this is my training website. If you've missed some of the trainings in the past, just go right here. I uploaded two more yesterday, and they are right here. Uh, as you can see, I've got trainings from a long ways back, uh, completing the paper application, getting the product and getting prepared, uh, completing a web application. So lots of good training videos on here. So jump in, subscribe, and watch some trainings. And hopefully I can get around to meeting every single one of y'all live, okay? So let me see if I can get Sean. Travis, you want to go ahead and unmute yourself uh, for a second? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. All right, perfect. So uh, this right here is Travis Robinson. And Travis, why don't you just go ahead and uh, give us a little bio about yourself and an introduction so everybody can understand who you are, where you're from, and what's going on. Yeah, um, based in Dallas, Texas here. I've been uh, in the insurance game for uh, final expense game, I guess I would say, since 2010, uh, January 2010. So... Uh, a little over 12 years doing this. Uh, I've been with uh, Security National now for uh, a little over four years. And so um, excited about being a part of the company. Uh, I had a lot of great opportunities with uh, Security National. And, um, yeah, just here to give whatever advice I can give to, you know, to make others uh, as successful, if not more successful than myself. Super. And, you know, Travis is one of those that uh, I have to say, you never know. I mean, one month he may write X number of policies and one day, one month he may pour it on, but he's always consistent. Very professional. I've had the opportunity to have Travis uh, back when we were doing some road shows and we're going to get back in there on the live panel. And I'll tell you uh, what a, what a blessing to have, uh, you know, Travis to even, you know, teach me and, and all of us learn together. He's a, and a very, uh, very warming guy and just love to death. And we've got a good working relationship there. So I'm going to call our second um, agent here because I can't, he can't seem to get through onto, uh, <laughs> onto the call, but I'm going to call him live here. So let's get Mr. Sean Miller on the phone here. Mr. Miller, you're live and in person. All right. Uh, well, so I was hitting, is it pound six or no? To I'm, unmute. I think it's pound six on the, on the phone. Um, okay. Well, I kept hitting that and it just wasn't responding. And then, <laughs> <laughs> so we were texting. If you need me to hop on the computer real quick, I can do that. It'll just take me a couple minutes. No, we're good. I think we can hear you. You're good to go. You're live in okay. front of... Uh, we got a big audience here, 20 people today. So yep. Tra Travis Robinson just introduced himself. And so you're on stage right now. Just give us a little background where you're at right now, kind of what you're doing, uh, what you've been doing, and anything you want to tell us about final expense or life or anything. Okay. Uh, so I've been in final expense for about 10 years. I've been in insurance for 20 plus. Uh, I was in the PNC world before and uh with a major carrier and uh, so um i ended up in final expense because along the way um i became a believer and uh along
along the way, I got into ministry. And so um, it just was a uh, final expense. Uh, it was a good way for me to mesh the two, for me to be able to do my ministry work and, you know, studying for, for teaching and, and preaching and, and uh, to be able to turn it on and turn it off, so to speak. And PNC, it's a little more difficult to do that. So that's, that's kind of how I ended up in the final expense side. And of course I did a little research um, and, you know, that was when they were talking about all the baby boomers and the wave and of retirees. And so it just seemed like a really good fit for me based on where my life was um, then and today. Um, so, and along the way <clears throat> I, uh, I met Keela and I don't remember exactly how we connected, but uh, <laughs> um, you know, he, everybody knows Keelan and, and, and his, you know, his desire to serve and to help people and, and to do a good job. And, and so we connected right away. And so, uh, he's, he's been a big part of me being, uh, with security national and riding more with them. Um, and there are other things too about security national I really appreciate, but I won't go further right now, but yeah. So basically that's kind of a short bio for me. <clears throat> super, super. And, and, uh, Sean has a son, a movie star as a son too. And so we'll talk about that. If you want to give a little props out for that. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so he does his son is in a movie. Which movie was it again? I'm drawing a blank right now. So, uh, the, the latest movie he was in, uh, is called Joe Bell and, um, it was out in theaters last year and now it's still on, um, you know, um, uh, Amazon. Um, it's called Joe Bell and J O E and then B E L L. It's a guy's name. It's Mark Wahlberg plays his dad. So it's, it's Reed and Mark and, uh, most of the film and it's been a, it's been a really good film. So, um, yeah. And, and that was part of my, my deal. And we'll get into that too on, on how I, how I work today in this business versus how I did pre COVID. Um, there was a couple of things that, that changed for us that, that kind of pushed me into the, the way I work now, which is different than before. So, but yeah, so that's his latest thing he has. He has some other things coming out, but I'm not sure about release dates yet. So, um, that's how those things go. You make the movie or the film today and then, it could take a couple of years before you actually see it on the screen. So, but anyway, yes. Cool. Cool. Yeah. And Sean was out in the middle of Odessa area, <clears throat> West Texas area. And then again, like I said, he went to uh, California with, for his son and for other reasons. And Sean, you're probably how much is business is yours? Telesales right now. It's a hundred percent. Okay. So he is, we've got two and not only that, round of applause. Sean was also the top producer in the country yesterday. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, I, I picked the right time for it. So um, uh -huh. I'm super, I'm super humbled by these two gentlemen. So I've got a couple of little questions here and, and y'all can both tag team in on this. Um, and uh, just, we'll just jump in and have a three-way discussion. Um, and I've, I've, I've kind of, I've kind of put some bullet points here together. Uh, and we can kind of chase a rabbit here and there if you want to, but let's talk about ways for prospecting. Let's talk about prospecting and preparing for the day and prospecting. Uh, Sean, while you're on them, on them, how do you prepare for the day and what are your number one ways to prospect for people, either by leads or not leads or book of business? Or if I, if you just started today and go, okay, I want to go try to find 10 people to talk to tomorrow. What would be ways that you would prepare your day to go prospect for tomorrow? Um, so you, you brought up a couple of things. Um, uh, I'll say this, uh, about the book of business. If you have a book of business, um, I strongly encourage you to, um, to look at that if you haven't been calling and working your book. Uh, so it was last, I don't remember. I think it was November. Um, um, I don't remember what was going on with the leads, but, but, I don't, anyway, I don't remember all the details there, but, um, as you guys know, lead sources change, not daily, but, but you have to be prepared for changes with, with the lead sources. And, and, you know, sometimes they get too expensive or, or just different reasons. But so 
I decided that I have haven't I had not been working uh, my book of current customers, and I thought I'm going to take a break from ordering leads because I was doing that super consistently, and so um, I it made a believer out of me. I didn't realize how uh, receptive people would be. Number one and number two, the buying habits of people, and this may seem elementary, and a lot of you probably know this, but it's, it's like the thing where you know it to do a thing, but then you just don't do it. Uh, but so, um, I had a lot of success writing additional coverage on, uh, my current customers and also revisiting, uh, you know, maybe I didn't write the spouse before, maybe they were still working and they had a year or two before retirement and they were hedging on going ahead and doing something. So between those two things in the book, the additional coverage and then other people in the household, uh, that was a, so if you, if you have a book of business and you haven't been working it as far as tomorrow and cause that's a question, you know, that, that comes up that some people ask me is if I was going to try to do the quickest, easiest A to Z point to write business, I would say, if you do have a book, then, then go there and start calling those people. Um, let's see. The second thing is, um, leads your current lead source that's outside of your book. And for me, since I've been on the, on the telesale side, it, it's, it's changed over time. And I've learned that you have to be flexible with that. It's like, you know, use the lead source as long as you can, as good as it, as you can, as, as long as it's uh, economically feasible. But, um, you know, there was a time when we did uh, TV leads, but then, um, uh, then it got super expensive. And so it just kind of didn't make sense to me anymore. So, and then I did telemarketed leads. So, uh, so there's different, different ways there, but I try to be prepared the day before, um, making sure that I'm going to have leads to call the next day. But as you guys know, that pre preparation is not just the day before it's like planning, planning further out and going, okay, these are my lead sources over the next, however many weeks. And I need to make sure I'm on top of that. So you don't wake up one day and your, your lead sources are dry. Perfect. Perfect. That's very, very good. Travis, you want to piggyback on any of that on um, uh, ways to prospect and how you go about it? Yeah. I mean, it's interesting. Sean saying a lot of the same things that I was thinking, you know, when you've been in the business a while, uh, you really don't have to go look for, for, for leads, so to speak, or business, uh, uh, because most of your existing clients, you know, I was just thinking about a barber or hairstylist, you know, they got their existing clients, and those are pretty much guaranteed, you know, to come in. And so with the existing book of business, oftentimes there are new additions to the family. Uh, they may need additional coverage because of, uh, you know, life-changing circumstances, uh, or they may have other family members or friends that they can refer to you. And so I get that quite a bit. I mean, my phone daily, I get people, uh, existing clients calling, uh, saying they need more coverage or somebody in the family or somebody they know needs coverage, you know, and it, you know, it creates a constant flow of leads, you know, so I try to mix it up with, you know, existing, uh, clients, referrals from existing clients and my existing book of business, or in addition to new leads, you know, kind of like a, uh, barber or hairstylist will look for walk-ins to, you know, add to their current clientele base. And so it's good to have both, you know, uh, new leads, new prospects, uh, as well as, you know, an existing uh, book of business. But for your, your new agents, being that they don't have a book of business or really haven't developed one, uh, leads are essential, you know. And in addition to, you know, buying leads, you want to try to, this is what I did when I first came in the game and I wasn't with SNL, but it, it, you know, this could still apply. I made sure that each lead that I bought when I, when I wrote one of them, I got five names from that particular lead. And out of those five names, usually one or two of those people would buy insurance. And so what I'm doing is not only have I made commission off of the lead, I've also turned around and got two, uh, five additional leads and, one or two of them would be potential, uh, if not prospects. Uh, so that's what I encourage you to do. In addition to that, door knocking is good. You know, I know we got COVID going on, but 
you know, that's still a good thing to do as well. You know, you use it as one person in the community uh, where, where the we live that doesn't have insurance. I'm pretty sure there's several others, you know, because an insurance man obviously hadn't been in the vicinity to service uh, that area, you know, in a while. And I've gotten a ton of leads. I mean, I can remember making over two grand in one day just doing that, just doing that, you know, kind of doing a crisscross effect, you know, going across the street, going next door, going across the street from that one. And you get in, hey, I just wrote Miss Jones across the street over there, took care of her family. Uh, I'm pretty sure you've got something already. Uh, just making sure you don't need any more. Oh, I don't have anything. You know, good you're here today. You know, walk right in and wrote a whole family and made, you know, a little $2,000, you know, in, in commission. So, you know, you start your day off right, you know, and mindfulness is important. You know, uh, make sure that you got your thoughts your thoughts in the right place. You got to have a plan of action for today uh, and try not to let, you know, things get in the way, you know, as far as, you know, what you've got planned out. You've set out to, to call leads, call leads. If you've set out to, you know, call your existing prospects to get leads for them, you know, do that. Just have a plan of action and, and try to stick to it. And I think that'll, that'll help a lot. Absolutely. And, and I want to kind of just piggyback off that on my training website here, you see um, this sheet right here, beat the lead. And I can't stress the importance of this. I personally, <clears throat> just to try them out, some of these new digital leads, and y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all do and some of you don't on the career program, but these new digital leads, and hopefully we're going to be able to roll these out to all independent agents also. But basically, it's a it's a search engine optimization. It's a Google ad lead that people put their information in and you call them or go see them. But here's the point is that I have found out, I think we have all found out that there's more than one way to contact or communicate or get a hold of a client. And we need to be really chameleons on on not just saying I'm only going to door knock. I'm only going to call. I'm only going to text. I'm only going to email. We have to, in today's society, know that different people communicate different ways. So in order to beat the lead, in order to take mm -hmm. one lead, like Sean's, I mean, like Travis is talking about, and turn it into four sales, we have to absolutely go see them or go call them or text them or email. And then we also have to ask for referrals. I mean, referrals are so huge and they're underused so much. Sean or Travis, have you ever hardly to ask someone for a referral and they didn't give you one? I mean, I, I'll go ahead. Um, I was just, <laughs> I was waiting. I was going to let Travis go first. Uh, you know, the funny thing about asking for referrals again, is the thing you know to do that a lot of times it works so well, you quit doing it. Um, but I think the, the thing is, I've had people that sometimes, yeah, they can't think of anybody and it just feels a little weird and awkward. But if I keep going and be consistent with asking, then the next person I see, you know, they pull out their book and they give me like five names. Right. So it's like it, it's like that. You don't give up after the first shot at it, and especially if it doesn't go well. You just think about consistency because uh, it is, you know. So much of it is a numbers game. Create that habit, you know, create the habit. And, and Sean, you can't see it. Travis, you can see it. You know, we have a referral form that's very simple here. And it helps you stay within your system to say, hey, did I make you feel comfortable? Are you happy with what I provided? Did I answer all your questions? And would you recommend me to friends and relatives? And then you're right, Sean. Some may say, yeah, I don't really know anybody. And the next person will bring out the Rolodex. But I will know. <laughs> You can't get a referral unless you ask, right? <laughs> yeah, and, and that's another thing that I've started to ask people. So uh, especially if they're a new customer and then I I try to find little touch points, like I'll call and follow up. Did you get your uh, did you get your uh, policy in the mail? You know, just ways that I can kind of serve. Uh, and I do want to say something about that. Being a person of faith, you know, Travis was talking about having your mindset. Uh, it's not what it used to be for me before it was just about making money, but it's a much deeper thing. Now I truly do want to help people and protect them. So it's much deeper than just, you know, me making money like it used to be. But in saying that I realized that Mrs. Jones, who it usually starts with because, uh, you know, not, not always, but a lot of times the women seem to be 
more uh, responsible and more wanting to take action. And then from there, it can build in terms of I'll ask them, okay, we've taken care actually of your daughter who's going to be the one that's going to be having to take care of these things when you pass away. But what about you? Is there someone in your family that they're going to leave you exposed? So uh, your husband or your brother or your sister or or maybe you have a, a an adult son or daughter that's, you know, maybe they're not being as responsible as you think they should be and you're concerned. And so let's protect you too. So be thinking about um, people in your life and in your circle that, that it may leave you in a position of you would be having to take care of things for them. That's right. And so that's a, that's what that is. It's, it's a way of, of, of painting it a little, connecting the dots for them a little more. And, you know, when you feel like you're not connecting on, can you, you know, who, who do you know, or who in your family, it's just a way to make it a little more specific and targeted. And it seems to make sense. So I, I will get business that way as well. When I'm asking for referrals, when I say that. Let's talk about um, building rapport right off the bat with your client, whether it's in face or in, I mean, in person or over the phone, how do y'all, what are some techniques or tricks or trades or what do you say at the door or on the phone? How do you like to build rapport uh, with the client? Cause that's the first step. Travis, you want to take that one first? Yeah. Uh, are you talking about when, when you initially meet the client? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Or when you first call them or you meet them, how do you, what do you, do you say something time and time again on building rapport? What are you, what are your go-tos? Yeah. Well, you know, you, you don't want to come off as, as sounding like a salesperson, you know, because when, and that starts too with, with your mindset, you have to not look at yourself as a salesperson. Like we're providing a service and anytime you're providing a service for someone, they need you. You know, I think uh, Sean t touched on that as well. So when you, when you see the, the need to help someone, uh, you know, your, your approach is totally different. Like, so when you, you know, when I usually call them, I'm going to break the ice, you know, I just want to ask them some questions about themselves. You know, let's just say for instance, they live in the Dallas or Fort Worth area or wherever, Tyler, wherever, you know, how long you live there, you know, um, if they hadn't lived there a long time, where'd you live before that? You know, just kind of ask, ask them some questions because people initially have that wall of defense up, you know, and, just to kind of break that wall, you know, I just ask just some, some personal questions, not too personal, but personal enough to make them feel comfortable, uh, you, you know, with me. And then I may divulge some personal things about myself, you know, well, I, you know, I have family in that area or, you know, do you know such and such? Well, that's a good friend of mine, a friend of mine. Just try to find something to get on a common ground with them about uh, versus just getting on the phone. Hey, Mrs. Jones. I'm with uh, Security National. Uh, I want to go ahead and talk to you about your insurance plan. Uh, okay, let's start with the basic, basic information. How old are you? You know, all of that type of stuff. You know, rather than going to that, try to get on a common ground with them, make them feel more comfortable. And even throughout the cell, you know, continue to talk to them. You know, I, I know I used to go in a house. One thing that I used to do and – I'll still do that. I'm not, I don't go in houses as much as I, as I used to, you know, with um, telesales and all that good stuff. But whenever I do go in a house, it's always good to look around. Look around, look at pictures, look at different things, and start to ask questions about those pictures, especially with your older, older people. You know, they love talking about their family, uh, you know, and their pictures and things like that. And just kind of put them at ease. And it works every time. It works every time rather than going in the house and going right into it. Uh, they'll sense it, you know, they realize that you're only there to make a sale to make money. Uh, you're really not, you know, there to, to offer them a service, so to speak. So, you know, that's what I do to really build a rapport with, uh, with the client and it, and it sure. works. It has sure. worked and I believe it continue to work. I love it. Sean, you want to piggyback on building rapport over the phone since you're 100% telesales? Yes. Uh, so, um, and I, I won't repeat what Travis said. I'll just add another component because, uh, yeah, we're thinking about a lot of the same things. Um, so uh, before COVID, it was strictly direct mail, uh, 20 to 25 leads uh, a week, wash and re rinse and repeat and knock the door of the lead until I get them. 
And uh, so there's something that's that's real common that I notice about seeing them face to face or calling on the phone. And that is so there's this step before this step, it seems like. And that step is when you knock on the door and they first answer the door. It's like this critical moment where what you say or what you do is, is going to help get you into the house so that then you can do that rapport building that Travis was talking about. But there's that initial, because, you know, a lot of times in the early days, I would just fumble in the beginning and I, I didn't even get to step two, which is getting in the house and rapport building. Mm-hmm. So, and I noticed it's the same thing on uh, telesales, um, that initial, when they answer the phone, what you say in the first few seconds and the first couple minutes is really going to make a difference on whether they hang up on you or, uh, yeah, and they do that, <laughs> uh, or, or they say I'm not interested or so, uh, on the telesell side of it, I try to think about what they're hearing all day. And most of the time, most of their phone calls I'm imagining is probably not a Travis or a me. Uh, it's probably someone calling out of a call center that probably doesn't have a lot of experience. And it's a, it's probably a very canned presentation right. and sale. And so, um, and you know, there's a lot of hard pushing on the, on the, on the customer and, and they sense that and they feel that and they push back because sometimes people will say to me, you know, I've had calls all day, but you're the only one I actually talk to. And I think it's because I slow down and it's that initial call. I'll, I'll ask for permission. I'll say something like, uh, I'll tell them my name. I'll say, I know we haven't met, um, but I'll tell you the reason for my call. And then once you know that, if you want to talk for a couple more minutes after that, we can. Is that okay? And usually they'll say, okay, because I said it's going to be a couple minutes and I'll tell you the reason first. And so then when they say, okay, that's my first getting the door cracked open and getting in. And then I'll say, you, uh, you went online, you filled out our form on the computer. You wanted to get this information. Now, right there, I am a little, I don't want to say pushy, but I, I, I keep talking for a minute. I don't let them talk yet because we're not there yet. I'll say some things about what they put on that form. Like, okay, obviously you put your phone number because I'm calling you, uh, but you also put your birthday and, uh, and I'll confirm it with them out loud. And then I'll also say, you also put your email address and, uh, and I'll read that to them and they'll go, yes. So by that time, once I do that, then again, I'm not letting them talk at this point. Then I'll say, oh, okay, well, good. Well, how are you doing today? So when I say that, how are you doing today? I'm already moving into the phase that Travis is talking about, which is now we're going to start rapport building and talking because I'm making the assumption that after those things we've talked about, they want to have that conversation. Now it doesn't always work. Sometimes they still hang up or, or they're not interested, but, um, but that seems to be a critical point of from that initial getting them on the phone to getting to the place where what Travis said about how they'll put the guard up. It's like once you get to that place, it seems like that's the place where they start to let their guard down. Well, you were and talking about something. That's pushing them. You're, you yes. know, it's if there's a fine line between um, <clears throat> um, between having, you know, salesman breath and also taking control of the conversation. Yes. What you're what you're saying is you want them to be involved in the conversation, but you still have to take control because if they get control, they're going to go, well, what, how much is this? Or, or what are you trying to sell? Or, or I didn't do that over online, you know, and I think you hit, you hit the nail on the head. You know, when, when I've done some, when I call people, I try to right off the bat, Hey, Sean, this is Keelan. You filled this out. I'm over here in Georgetown. I have your information right in front of me. I can almost open a credit card with your information. I've got so much, but I've got it right here and I'm here to help you and take care of you. So, I mean, I think we're all kind of saying the same things. It's kind of like, hold on y'all don't run. Don't bolt. Don't push me out the door. Just listen to me for a second. And sometimes you do have to beg like that. I mean, that gum, you know, sometimes you gotta go, Hey, listen, just give me a chance to tell you what I'm here for, you know? Um, and, to, and to take control of that conversation. I like your, I like your uh, ask for permission. And I wrote that down here. That's very, I think that really allows the client to feel respected and trusted when you ask them for permission. You want to barrel in on that just a little bit more? Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. So that I think when you ask for permission, it's like it's saying things that, and we've all read this in sales books. It's those little initial things that that in their mind they're saying yes to because they're logical things. Uh, my name is Sean Miller. We haven't met. So you know, you don't know me. Those kind of statements. Well, that's correct, right? So in their brain, they're going, yes, I haven't met him. So far, he's saying what is true because that's what they're trying to spot is if, if we're being salesman and we're not being true or Trust. we are. Yep. And then that, that next part where you say, um, um, you know, the thing about uh, I'll tell you the reason I'm calling because they want to know that right away. They tell me quick. So I'll tell you real quick. And then if you want to talk a couple more minutes, we can. So, again, check, check, check. They're like, yes, yes, yes. And then the two minute part is like you saying, this is not going to take long to do. Now, right. sometimes I'll say if they sound like they're in a hurry and you're in that kind of begging posture, which, you know, when you're in the begging posture, I still think you got to figure out a way to do that without it seeming that way. Sure. Like you're pressing them because it's important and you're there to help them. So, and that's why I said that in the beginning about my motivation. It's, it makes a big difference when I know that I'm trying to, to honor the Lord and I'm not trying to preach here. I'm just saying, when I'm talking to people, I think it comes through that I'm trying to act with honor and integrity and, and actually help them. So so sometimes I'll say to them, uh, if I see they're in a super big hurry and they say it, I'll say, look, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you the short version. Is that good? Yeah. And usually good. they'll say, OK, you know, and, and I mean, what's the short version that you cutting out the chit chat? But here's what happens once you do the say the short version and they say, OK, how many times has that turned into the long version? Because they, you know. They let their guard down and now they want to talk because in the beginning, they're just, you know, really don't know who you are and probably would rather not be on the phone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Good. Golly, just some good points in there. I'm writing them down. And, and uh, so uh, I hope everybody is, is looking at those two, but let's move on a little bit more. How important is the price and the face amount as far as being affordable for them, uh, retention, keeping it on the books? How, how much do you go into price and face amount? How important is it, is it to get that right? Sean, go ahead and take that. And then Travis, you can piggyback on it. Okay. I was going to let Travis go first. <laughs> hey, yeah, either way. I don't care. Yeah. Um, so as far as price goes, um, it can be important. Um, I mean, I'm sure people have different approaches on how they, they put that initial number out there. Um, typically what I'll do is, um, you know, I'll say after those things I said about my initial call and getting the permission and then going, uh, okay, so how are you doing today? And kind of letting our guard down, then I'll explain a quick process. And the process is, look, I'm going to ask you a few health questions. And with that, I'll be able to determine which is the best plan that you qualify for, because we do want to get you the best rate but we also want to get you the best coverage. And so that makes sense and they're okay with that. And so we'll go into that. Um, and I'll also tell them, I, I want to, I want to try to be as accurate as I can on your rate too. I don't want to just give you any rate and then it not be a true rate. That doesn't mean I'm a hundred percent every time, but we want to get as accurate as we can or as close as we can. So you can get a realistic expectation. Then after we, after I ask them the questions and then I go in to do the quote, uh, and I know everybody can be different on this one, uh, but typically what I'll do is I'll just pick a number based on their age and uh, what I, you know, whether they're modified or preferred, where that premium is going to fall. So I might say if I think that 8,000 is going to fall around 50 bucks a month, then I'll go, OK, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to give you an amount of coverage with the rate so that you have an example of how it runs. Now, once you hear that then we can look at some numbers either lower than that or higher, but we want to find, you know, the sweet spot for you. And so I'll say, for example, based on your health and all that, you would qualify for 8,000 at $50 a month. Now, and I also, I'll pause and give them a second with that. And then usually they'll say something, but if they don't, I'll say, so what are you thinking? Do you think about a little bit more or do you think about a little bit less? Cause I know that you're probably, thinking about your pocketbook and also how much you need to leave for your family. And then usually that'll spur them on to say, yeah, I think I want to know 10 or I want to know six or, or they'll say, mm, my money's really <clears throat> tight. And so 
then that helps you get a pinpoint and then them lead you either we're going higher or we're going lower. And then once they do that, you know, sometimes you'll say eight and they'll say, well, how much is 20? Yeah. And then then you go to 20 and then you do that rate. And then you're going to know pretty quick if that knocked their eyes out or if they're like, oh, okay, well, that's good. And then I'll go, well, let's do a couple more so that we can kind of compare. And the reason I do that is, um, and I know everybody can do it differently here, but I really, so I'm, I'm careful about not just overselling because, you know, sometimes you can oversell because you're excited and you know you're helping them and then you get too much premium and then they end up lapsing the policy. Yeah. So yeah. I really try to give them several options. Once they point me in the ballpark they're in, I may be, if, if they say 20 and it sounds good, I may tell them, okay, well, here's 25 and then here's uh, 18. So we can really narrow down on what they're super comfortable with on their, their payment. And if it's a, if it's a higher premium amount, I'll even try to talk them off the ledge a little bit and say, now, are you sure that you're comfortable with that? Cause I, I you know, the only good insurance is the one that's enforced when you need it. Right. So we want it to be able to, you know, so I kind of talk through some of you may say that seems a little counterintuitive, but, but, um, well, I, like, I really am trying to help them, and I want them to be where they're comfortable. Um, I'll tell you one. That. Yeah, one thing that you you said that that I just pinpointed and wrote down is that uh, you you said what are you thinking? And I think when you do that again, you want to take control of the conversation. But I think if you already feel like you've got control of the conversation, and you bring up you, when you're talking about premium and price, you go, you know, what are you thinking? That allows them to to go ahead and give you an objection. And you to to cover that objection up right then and there, because the last thing you don't want is to get to the very end and they go, uh, no, that's too much. Uh, no, never mind. Just forget it. Let's just not do yeah. this. You know, so if you overcome those objections during the sale versus just letting them at the very end tell you no, then I think you increase your odds and you increase them, your trust with them um, and they trust you more that you are there to help them out. And I get it, you know, sometimes talking off the cliff, sometimes, hey, are you sure you can afford this 50? I mean, we can go down to 30 or 35 or 40 and still get you a good plan. And if they there, because they'll talk their way back up, go, no, I can do 50. And then, you know, I just say, hey, listen, because we want to make sure this thing is going to be there forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. <laughs> so. Well, that's part of the plan that we sell them on is, look, this plan is not going to cut off at 80. It's going to keep going. Yep. So. You know, they're guaranteeing that. So we want to make sure that you feel comfortable that you can continue in that way. So, yeah, absolutely. Travis, anything on price and premium? How important? Yeah, Sean, what Sean said, I thousand percent agree, man. Uh, you know, and I, I, I pretty much do the same thing. Uh, I kind of have a little bit of a different technique uh, as far as what I do with the pricing. Um, people like options. You know what I mean? People like options. So uh, an old veteran shared it with me when I first came in the game, a technique that he used. I've used it since then, and I use it today, and it it's amazing. And I present a good, better, best option, right? Good option, better option, the best option. Uh, Keelan, you know that I work with the funeral home. They've got four out, uh, outlets there in Jackson, Mississippi. I work very hard with them. So I'm very familiar with the funeral prices and things of that nature. And I usually start at 10. I start at 10. That'll be my good. My better would be 15. And my best will be 20. And, you know, Mrs. Jones, okay, here's your good, better, and best options. Uh, 10,000 X number dollars, you know, 15 X number, 20 X number. Uh, which one of these, you know, Will you think will fit your budget? Most of them will like to have the best one, but nine times out of ten, they're going to go with the middle one, right? Or they may ask for a little bit more. You know, uh, if the good option is is too much, then they'll say, okay, well, you know, really, I can't afford any of these. You know, okay, well, we can look at something just a little lower. Well, with the cost of funeral prices today. That's the reason we structure like this here. Most of your funeral is going to run between, you know, ten, fifteen thousand dollars or somewhere around there. When you consider, you know, a grave plot, opening, closing up the cemetery, um, all the different, uh, you know, 
things affiliated with the funeral, it could easily be, you know, ten, fifteen thousand uh, dollars. Another thing I want to mention about pricing, I used to have this goal, I mean, this rule where I wouldn't go over sixty dollars years ago, right? You know, like the sixty yard line. Try to stay between forty and sixty dollars. That's not true. Here's the reason why. Everybody doesn't wear the same size shoe, okay? Mm-hmm. I have people out there that are paying 200 and some dollars a month in premium, and they've been on the books for a while. They pay it every month. Whereas I have people maybe paying 20 or $30, they'll end up laughing. So you can't be afraid to, you know, write a policy with a large premium. Now, you can really tell if a person is not able to afford it. You know, a lot of cases, you know, they're kind of questioning, eh, I don't really know, but if they're adamant about getting that one, that 25000 at 30000 even if it costs 100 something, 200 a month, that's the one I want. Hey, Mr. Jones, you sure you can afford this? Yeah, I, I don't want this to be a problem now. You know, I'm not here to cause this to be a problem. I want this to be something that could be there when you need it. Uh, so each month going forward, you can handle this. I can handle it. Okay, write the policy. But someone that's kind of back and forth about it, eh, they're not too sure. Well, that's when you have to step in. Uh, and being a caring person, right, providing the service, Mrs. Jones, I see you kind of have a little problem deciding on whether you want to go with the, the better or the good one. Uh, let's just go with the good one. You know, we can always add later. We can get another policy later when you see your financial. They'll thank you for that, right? Go ahead and write the, the good one. And six months down the road, year down the road, you give them a call. Hey, Mrs. Jones, you know, how are things going? Just checking in on you. Okay, Travis, you know what? Uh, I've been really thinking about adding another 5000 their situation have changed, right? They can afford it now. So in that type of a situation, you have to kind of think for the client, do what's best for them. But at the same time, don't be afraid to write a policy that may have a higher premium. I mean, people, some people, their their mortgage, their homes are paid off, their cars are paid off. They don't have right. a lot of bills. They understand the importance of insurance. And, you know, I've got a couple people that spend over $1,000 a month in premiums. They got policies on them themselves, their wife, their children, their grandchildren, you know what I mean? And they keep it up every month. So let's not judge a book by its cover and have an open mind, you know, when you're talking to people and, you know, always try to, to do what's best for them. The golden rule, treat others the way we want to be treated and I always provide them with different options. Don't just show them one thing and, and think that's the best shoe for them to put on their foot. Wow. What's well, great advice. I hope everybody appreciates the advice because you're getting top producer and top, top advice in the, uh, in the final expense market here. So I'm um, honored to have this. Let's have a two more, two more things here and we'll close it down. Uh, I want to get next to last thing. How important is it to, uh, to brand yourself and be branded? How important uh, is that? I'll, I'll take that one uh, first. Can you hear me? Yes. Can, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. There? Yeah, that, that's one of the main things that... Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, I'm kind of getting a little feedback. Ke- Keelan, can you hear me? Okay. I can. Yeah, that's one of the things that I was really wanting to bring out today. Um, I, I wanted to make mention about that. That's three things that we should have working for us to make our, our business successful, right? And number one is us working for our business, right? Number two is our business working for us, right? And then number three is people working for us. What do, what do I mean by that? Number one, we have to make ourselves stick out, so to speak. You know, even the way I dress, like nine times out of 10, I'm going to have a suit on every day, at least a shirt and tie, nice pair of swag and shoes. You know, and when I go out, people ask, hey, what do you do? You know, insurance agent, hey, provide my car to them. That's me working for my business, right? Me going out, me calling leads. That's me working for my business. Me calling uh, my existing clients, my existing book of business. That's me working for for my business. My business working for me is branding, right? Okay, making sure I'm leaving cards out, uh, sending text messages, emails, things of that nature. Um, you know, those of us that attend church, you know, making sure that individuals in our church or spiritual worship centers I actually know that what we do, right? Uh, people in our community, people in our family, you know, everybody knows in my family that I'm the insurance agent, right? I'm the insurance agent. So they shouldn't, your family members should not be going uh, to purchase 
insurance, especially final expense insurance, from any anybody outside of, of of us, right? Out of you, and you know, and that that's a matter of me letting them know what I do. Like all of my cousins, my aunts, my uncles, everyone needs to know that, that I'm the person to go to uh, when you know you need final expense insurance, life insurance, right? The third thing was people working. Uh, for us. What I've done, I'll just give you guys one scenario. What I've done, I've partnered up with an individual here in Texas. Well, two individuals, one in Mississippi, one in Texas. And they actually provide me with leads. Now, these are not just prospects. These are individuals that they've talked to already. They've already explained the product. They told them how good of a job I did for them, how good of a service I provided for them. These people just want to know the cost and they're ready to sign up. That's what I mean by people working for for you, right? Or for your business. And what I do as an incentive, I give them gift cards. Right? Everybody likes getting something, right? So give them a Walmart gift card, you know, Amazon gift card, you know, just give them something. Twenty dollars, twenty five dollars. What's twenty twenty five dollars to make five hundred dollars, to make a thousand dollars. You know what I mean? And I actually say yeah. those people work for me because on a regular basis, each week, week in, week out, they're going to call me with at least one person. You know what I mean? And so, again, us working for our business, our business working for uh, for us, as well as people working for us. And, uh, and we kind of touched on it with the existing client base, but also just partnering up with one or two people that you've serviced, provided this service for and put them to work for you. Most of them sit at home. You know, they're retired, they're on Social Security, they don't have a whole lot going on, but they know a lot of people, right? And so once you tap into that market, you get referrals from them, then tap into their market. And it's just, it's, it's a snowball effect, man. I, I can't explain how amazing it, it can become uh, yeah. if you uh, implement it, those it, things. In your phone, I mean, it's crazy when I talk to people in the agency in these days and times, we have a phone full of a thousand contacts, a thousand people, 600, 700, whatever. You know, imagine the business model that everybody that's in your contact list, just in your phone, knew exactly the, what you did and who to call when that conversation piece came up. I'll bet you it's unfortunate, but I bet you all of us on the line here only have maybe at the most four, five, six, eight percent of the people that are in our contact list, even our closest relatives, people, their friends, you know, insured and protected. I mean, and so... No, people knowing what you do, and I love that people working for you, you working for your business, and your business working for your business. We we need to dissect that down and dig a whole hour and a half into that because that's very important. Sean, do you have on branding yourself over the phone? How do you yeah. brand yourself and make people feel comfortable that you're giving them a good product and that you're branded and you're you're true? What are some of the things you do for people verbally? Yeah, so. Uh, uh... Thank you, Travis, for what you said. That was super helpful, and um, I appreciate what how you do your business too. Um, so I'll take a, a little bit different approach, so we're not being redundant. But uh, on the branding, that's huge. That's a really, really, really personal big deal for me, and it dovetails into doing business with Security National. And this might sound like a plug, but it's just the truth. So. Um, you know, I, I, I said that, you know, my initial deal with uh, Security National uh, co point of contact was you, Keelan. And so we kind of started to develop this relationship. Right. And uh, and of course, you know, we did the contract and all that. But along the way, <clears throat> you've always been as best as you can be. And I try to respect your time. But if I need something, you're usually pretty quick to respond. And um and, and you're on it and, and always helpful. And, and so I appreciate the way that you do business. Well, so then you, you see how it works with security national. So, uh, especially doing the telesales, I, I guess I'm probably talking to people more on the phone than, than maybe if I was doing paper apps. Um, so I know a lot of the people by name now at security national. And right. the thing is, from day one, that has extended from Keelan to the employees at Security National, and it's huge because I've been in situations where I would go in the home with another company, 
do the paper app, and then we would call a third party who would do the, the phone interview. And it was pretty obvious that they didn't care too much about what was going on. They were just filling in the blanks and, and, you know, didn't seem to care about the customer or have a, um, um, I'll give you an example. So, you know, sometimes there may be a customer that's a little slower. They talk a little slower. They think a little slower. And, you know, you have to read the room in terms of your pacing with people. And then I would call in and the person would talk, you know, fast. And then it was obvious that, that they weren't understanding the question. And then they would just repeat it quickly again. But when, when I call Security National, it starts with that initial phone interview when we do the application. Once I've uploaded that app and I call in and I get Brian or Jeanette or, or any of those guys, Melanie, um, when I get them on the phone, I have a lot of confidence that I'm branding myself with that customer. And my brand is this. Number one, I am not like most of the people out there. I'm not calling in a call center. Um, I'm, I'm, I've been doing this a long time and I'm able to help you. You know, there's the thing you hear that saying uh, about how's it go. Um, people don't care how much you know till they know how much you care. Well, and good. I tell them, actually, there's two pieces to that. I could care a whole lot about you, but if I don't know anything, if I'm brand new, I'm not going to be much help to you. So what you need is two things. You need me to really care. And that means act with honesty and integrity and do what's best for you and not me. And the second thing is, because I've been doing this so long, I'll be able to help you better and tell you what you need as we go along. So that's important. But the other piece of that branding is this, is, is Security National. Because when we call in and I get those guys on the phone, I'm always confident that they're going to be friendly to those people. And if the person's talking slower or they're in a hurry, I can even say, look, I know you can't shortcut the process, but they're about to go to work. And so just wherever you can keep it quick. Yeah, they do the best they can, but they're always accommodating me and the customer. So and then when we call in, if we need customer service and we need help and I have to call in a three way with the customer to change something or, or a date or a bank or anything, the same deal. And real quick. So. It was about four or five years ago, uh, there was a company that came on the scene with a plan and it was very competitive in a niche market. And so I added that to it. And so I, I wrote the lady that plan and uh, and uh, we, we had to call in because of something to do with the draft date. And so we called, we told them, they said, okay, they would fix it, done. And then she ended up getting the draft not on the date she asked for, and it was before that. And so we called in on a three-way call together, and it was just a it was a fiasco. And so um, after that, when we hung up, I said, "Look, I've got another company. Yes, they are going to be more, um, but they are hands down my favorite company, um, and they will be easy to deal with and to talk to and to get good service." And so we called in and she was super happy and she was paying a fair amount more on that plan per month um, just because that was a niche thing, but she was happy because, and so that told me too, Sean, be careful with, with price and that kind of thing, because it could, you could be sacrificing the customer service side. And here's the other thing. If you're doing that good of a job now, then odds are when that person passes away and their son or daughter is at the funeral home and they're taking care of things, they're going to get a good uh, response from security national on the claim side too. So, so that's, that to me is how I think of branding is they know I'm going to serve them and help them and put their needs first. And hopefully I honor the Lord in that. Uh, but the other thing is, is that I'm partnering with a company that's going to continue that, that same type of, uh, uh, you know, thinking. So, um, uh, so that it's consistent. Well, there's no doubt. I think I think everybody on the line can tell that both of these both of these guys um, they just the their tones, uh, the way they talk, are already honest, you know. And that's what I love about both of them, you know. And so you can just feel that through the phone. You can hear their, their the way they talk, and that that creates a lot of branding and a lot of honesty. And one, you know, I just can't say enough about that. So one last question here, and uh, it's kind of a an open-ended question, and uh, but I think this is very important, especially for us as agents. Sometimes we go through, you know, times where we have a week that's dry, have a month that's dry. You know, uh, sometimes we 
we, you know, we struggle, we get the door slammed on us, you get the phone hung up on you, uh, you know, and you don't understand <clears throat> why. But in the end of the day, you know, I'll start with you, Sean, and then we'll transition back to Travis. Why do you do this? Why do you like, final, why do you love final accepts? Why do you do what you do? What is your why? Yes. Um, so my, uh, I spent a lot of uh, summers with my grandparents in West Virginia uh, as a kid growing up. And, um, and so we were close. And so I think about the market that I get to serve. And that's who I think about when I'm talking to talking to older people, if you will, you know, older than 50, which I'm one too, but even on up beyond that, um, I just think of that. I think I'm, I'm trying to do the best that I can for that them. And I'll tell you, I'm really grateful. Um, um, for those of you of faith, I know you are, and, and I'm not saying you're not grateful if you're not, but, but in the early days when, when I wasn't a person of faith, it really was just about numbers and money and being at the top of the leaderboard. I mean, I was just so driven and competitive. And now for, for the way things have worked out with this baby boomer population, this wave of people retiring. So you have this, this ready market, if you will, that keeps expanding. And then, then I have these people that I think so much of, and I think I want to help them and protect them uh, because I know uh, there's obviously, I, I, you know, Keelan attracts a lot of people and I'm guessing security national that there are people that are trying to do a good job by people, but we know there's a lot of people out there that are not, they're just seeking to take advantage. So, so I'm really thinking about those people and, and I'm grateful that I get to do that, that I'm not back in that other space I was in and being that person I was driven by money and, and time and 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 I think what it does is like you said what about when you have the tough weeks and you have the the, the tough months um then then you have to have that that's what keeps you going or it's, it's it's what keeps me going because if it's strictly about money and those kinds of things then when you do have tough weeks and tough months you're going to be so frustrated and aggravated and and there's there's no peace and and then when you get on the phone and you're in that space and that head space, man, just, you might as well forget it. I mean, I'm not saying don't call, but I'm saying it's so hard to, to mask or hide that that's going on inside of you. Cause it's, it's kind of like, you don't have peace and they're going to pick up on it versus that attitude of, I really want to help you. So I think I'm kind of, we're saying the same thing again, but that, that is Keelan. That really is, is my why is that, that I honor God and what I do. And, and that's not always easy because yeah, we work on commission. So, and sometimes we, we really need that person to take the higher premium, right? Yeah. We've all been there, I hear um, you. but that's, that's when we pray and, and we know God will provide. And, and so it gives me that peace and stability I, I need so that I can go, okay, no, you, you know, if that's what's best for them, then, then you do that. But, but it helps carry me through the lean times. And here's the thing. There's always lean times, and guess what? You 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 know you get carried through it, and then you have the good times too. Yep. But, uh, but that's uh, it takes you in the early days. It was like being on a roller coaster. You were up on a high when you were writing tons of business because that was your goal, or you're at the top of the leaderboard, or both, or you're down in the dumps because you know you're having a terrible month, and you're at the bottom of the leaderboard. Yep. But but this way you have that peace and that consistency. And I think that carries through too, as you're, whether you're calling them someone face to face or you're calling them on the phone. It's, it only takes one, one good client to turn your, your attitude around and you're ready to go again. You know, that's what I love about it. Oh man. Tra yes. Travis, what is your why? Yeah, man. Uh, first of all, Sean, I want to thank you for, for mentioning spiritual, uh, um, peace to all this man you, you know and keelan you know man every time i have a good week or whatever i always give credit to god because without him you know nothing would be possible uh and, and not to get spiritual on you but as it mentions uh matthew 6 33 you put god first his kingdom everything else will be added to you and so each day i get up you know i don't think about the dollar think about the amount uh that i need to make it just falls in my lap man you know so to speak when i provide service to people uh I'm going to drop a link in the chat here 
uh, one of my good motivational speakers that I, uh, I listen to uh, on, a, on a weekly basis at least. I try to re- recharge myself. It's Earl Nightingale. And he speaks about acts of service, right? So when you're providing acts of service to people, uh, the law that God has put in place is you're going to receive more. So if you want more, give more, right? And that comes with looking for ways, looking for opportunities to help people. And in the, the, the line of work that we do with insurance, we have to see uh, a, a positive for every negative, right? When we get a door slammed in my face and we get a, a phone hung up, well, we have to keep in mind that if not the next call, maybe the call after that will be that sale. We have to stay positive. But, you know, I've knocked on 20, 30 doors and every one of them got slammed in my face except for that last one. And that last one was a super sale. What 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 would have happened if I gave up on the 20th door? You know, you just got to keep moving forward, keep seeing the opportunity and keep As long as you do that, you'll be fine. You know, uh, let people know you care about them. Be more than an average insurance agent. Present yourself to someone different, uh, someone that uh, isn't average. You know, carry yourself with confidence. Uh, you know, don't practice conformity. You know, don't, don't do what everybody else is doing. You know, create your own paradigm. Do what's best for, for you and what works for you. And, uh, you know, you can kind of bounce off of other people, like some of the things that Sean has presented, some of the things that I've presented. You know, you can implement some of those things, but create what works best for you and, you know, you'll go on this and just stick with it and trust God. Let me break it up a little bit, Travis. Well, if y'all can hear me, hopefully you can hear me. Uh, I think yeah, hear you. Great. Keelan. Okay. I, yeah, I'm having trouble hearing him too. Yeah. Are you there? I'm here. Did you hear me? No. You hear I so, I, I lost that last little bit, so repeat it. Oh, wow. no, I just said that, you know, each of us, we can, we can kind of pull from different areas, such as what I mentioned, what Sean mentioned, Keelan, some of the things that you throw out there. But at the end of the day, you know, we have to create our own technique so to speak to make this work for us and you know keep god first provide service to others and you know things will fall into place you'll be successful uh in this industry for sure absolutely wow what a but what a great uh uh <laughs> i just i want to keep going and going and going and going you know and listening to these guys and uh they're very motivational and uh we didn't plan any of this this is actually really last minute to jump on here but Hey, uh, the man upstairs has a plan for everything. So it turned out really, really good. Got two things I want to finish with just to summarize this. And, and uh, you know, it goes back to the same thing that we've talking about. You know, at the end of the day, the end of the life when we're gone or we're getting close to going, you know, to being gone, uh, I just, I'm passionate about this business. I love protecting families. You mean, I go out and write business too when I when I can and, and see people and hug their necks, shake their hands because, you know, how how many opportunities do people get to where they get go out and protect and serve people and also make money for our family? I mean, it's just one of those things. And here's the deal: it's not like we're trying to sell auto insurance or homeowners insurance or well, if it rains or if it hails or if it if you have an accident or if you do, it's not. This is this what we do is a win you pass away because we're all going to have that day. This is a win it happens. Everybody you see is a potential client. Everybody needs protection. Here's the other thing that I keep saying. I know y'all heard me say it again, but <clears throat> how many funerals are we going to attend? How many people are going to pass away in our life in the next 20, 30, 40 years? How many times are we going to be able to either be on that front pew, hugging those people neck, just saying, hey, thank you. Thank you for protecting my uncle. Thank you for writing a policy on my aunt. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because we don't know what we'd do without it. And or are you going to be on that back pew trying to get out of that church or out of that funeral home because you said, oh, my gosh, I didn't ask them if they had coverage or you, or you hear somebody having a, a fundraiser or go fund me because you were too timid or too scared to present yourself. And I think these two men right here just portray that servant, you know, attitude of serving people. And it makes it easy. It makes it fun. It makes it enjoyable. And it makes it a blessing. 
you know. So in closing, Travis, you want to go first and Sean, you close it down and then we'll end it. Any last words? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, so I just I just dropped a couple of YouTube links in the chat. Uh, guys, please check it out. Good information, personal developmental skills, uh, Earl Nightingale, Bob Proctor. Uh, some of you all may be familiar with those two guys, but they've helped me tremendously. Uh, I try to wake up each day, do something spiritual, then transition into some type of mindfulness to get my mind in the right place. Keelan, you know, I've been through a lot. lost my mom uh, latter part of April, uh, two yeah. months in ICU with her. And, uh, man, through it all, man, we, we persevered and God has shown his hand. And we still, you know, produce business. And, you know, at, at this point, I'm just – I'm game to, to – <laughs> to supersede what I did in 2021. So 2022 can be great for all of us. Believe in yourself. Uh, it's not a difficult industry to be in. It, it, your income is determined by how hard you work. Uh, so it's all up to you. Travis, thank you so much. Sean, anything closing? Yeah, just closing. Um, yeah, I start every morning with, or, or do my best to, sometimes days get away from you, but I try to start it, you know, and scripture and prayer and preparing for the day and, and get myself right. And, um, so, and I wanted to just put this out there, Keelan, not that I'm anybody, but I, this is what I do know, uh, over the years is sometimes it can be a lonely business and you can, you feel kind of alone, you know, mm -hmm. and, and sometimes when you're down, you really feel that way. And so I just want to put this out there. If, if anybody ever wants to call me for any reason, just as a, another agent to another agent and you want to, um, you know, whether it's uh, you just need some encouragement from another agent or you need uh, uh, somebody to be praying for you or, or you just, you know, you want to say, hey, how are you? Which leads are you using the digital ones? Are you calling them? You know, what's happening? Sometimes we want to know that, too. Maybe you start a process and you're like, I know that guy said he was doing that, but I must be missing a step. Yeah, so I'm just. I'm putting that out there. If, if, you know, if Keelan, you're welcome to give anybody my number. And if you guys call, I'm, you know, I'm all on the phone a lot. Just leave me a quick message and I'll call you back as soon as I hang up. But, but I do want to put that out there because we are, we're all in this together and, and Keelan, you do a great job of, of trying to remind us that and, and keep us together in it. So thank you for that. And yeah. Well, I'm nobody without y'all and that's including these two people and all 25 of everybody else that's on the line here today. I would be nobody. And so I'm here to help. And we're in this thing together. We're in this battle together and I think we can do it, you know? So just thank you tremendously for these two wonderful men the influences in my life and, um, you know, and, and a blessing for our businesses and we will dig back into it a little bit deeper, maybe chase some rabbits down some lead holes and things, uh, you know, in the next week or two. So thank you, everybody. Again, let's go protect people. Let's serve people. You've got an opportunity, branding, books of business, sweet spots, important price, building rapport and timing. Uh, you can all do it. And I'm here to help. We are here to help. So thank you for the hour and a half ish uh, or more. Uh, I appreciate everybody on the line here. Have a great Thursday and thanks again. And as I always say from Texas, adios. Adios. Thanks, Keila. Steve Jeff. Mm -hmm.